Hey guys, C Dub here, and today we're gonna do something a little different. Today we're gonna do a character analysis. I actually uploaded this video to my other channel. I thought it'd be good for this channel as well. And also with the game coming out, I thought why not a character analysis of Spider-Man? So let's get into it. When you look into the earlier comics of Spider-Man, yes, he did have his quips and was a little bit of a jokester, but it was a lot of emotional depth to the character which a lot of people do not see with Spider-Man or a lot of people who just come in and maybe read a comic or so don't understand the emotional depth level of the character. They think he's kind of Deadpoolish, but the difference between Spider-Man and Deadpool is when you read a Spider-Man comic, you really want to get the emotional aspect of it as well. You don't really go in and like he needs to have quips and be joking. With a Daredevil comic, it's going to be weird if he's not joking. And that's not to say he doesn't have emotional, you know, story arcs or emotional time periods of that character. But when you go to Daredevil, you're looking for him to be funny and action packed type of comic. For Spider-Man, it doesn't have to be that. In the earlier comics, you got a lot of, let's say, serious moments. You see him struggling with money. You see him struggling with school, his social life. You do see some joking aspects of him, but it's not really the end all be all of it. You just get maybe a taste in there, maybe a joke here and there, but later on he becomes more of the joking type of character. Right now you're trying to get into him and into his life and get to know him a little bit better. Now, of course, later on, when other writers began to take control of the character, his joking became a lot more part of his comics. It became a mainstay. It wasn't as big of a mainstay. Like I said, a joke here and there in the early ones. But later on, he really becomes that jokester that when he first started out. What makes Spider-Man so damn relatable is that anybody can understand what he's going through. He's dropped out of school. He's been broke. He's had really, really big financial problems. And like I said as well, social problems with him hiding his identity, him having to go out at night, him trying to have a job, him trying to do both things, trying to support him and his aunt. And he's so damn relatable. A lot of people think Batman is the most relatable character but the only thing relatable about Batman is he's just human with no powers that's pretty much all you can relate to him as unless you're like part of that one percent if you are part of that one percent then yeah you can relate to Batman but most of us aren't that's why it's one percent so Spider-Man a lot of people can relate to he's such a relatable character and you really want to see him succeed with Batman and other superheroes it's not as you know, important for them to, to succeed, at least in their everyday life. You want them to succeed when they're battling a villain here and there, but you really don't care as much about their everyday life. With Spider-Man, at least in my opinion, you want to see him win, not just with other villains and other characters he's going up against, but you want him to win in his everyday life because you have seen the struggle if you, if you have been, you know, reading along and reading that issue by issue which is why I think a lot of people should go back and see the early struggles of him because a lot of people will not see that even the man has had to have Mary Jane pay for stuff because he could not do it and he did feel bad about not being able to pay and having to rely on Mary Jane for stuff but to me Mary Jane and Peter are really really a true love story which is very hard to get down in a comic but i think they did the best they could with it it's still a little bit maybe unrealistic because you know supermodel girl but then again a supermodel who knows that he's spider-man yeah she might you know want to do that anyway let me go to gwen stacy before i get into mary jane so gwen stacy came along early in peter parker's love life and i think this was a good starting out point for him both in college, you know, college love thing going. And yeah, I think that this was the right way to go was to kill her off as early as they did. So it could set up to more stuff later on. I didn't think Gwen Stacy was, you know, the girl for Peter. I didn't think that. I didn't think she was the one like Mary Jane was. I'm more of a Mary Jane fan, of course, 
than a Gwen Stacy fan just because I've seen more of their struggles than Gwen Stacy because she got killed off early. And I just never was as interested in Gwen Stacy. I don't know why. She just did not interest me as much. But you know, I just I, I don't see as much of the appeal with her. Mary Jane to me is the person who, you know, you argue with, but at the end of the day, she has your back for any decision that you make. She had to deal with a lot of stuff for her to make that decision when Peter Parker is on this rampage because of his Aunt May getting shot. And she even makes the sacrifice to lose her daughter, lose the whole relationship because Peter Parker wants his aunt back. And she made a great point when she was saying, Aunt May has lived for so long. Why can't we get our turn? But she was still selfish enough, or selfless enough, excuse me, to say, fine, if that's what you really want. And like I said, that's really a true love type of moment to sacrifice it that much for someone. But anyway, that's enough of the love life. Let's get into some of the other characters that come in for Peter. Spider-Man and Peter, they are very forgiving. As in, they really want their villains to reform. Except for, I would say, maybe Carnage and um, Green Goblin. I think he was like, okay, then I want to reform. And to be honest, Green Goblin was not. It's hard to get those business maniac ego type of people to reform. Because they were successful being that way. So it's kind of hard to get to change that. But what was very interesting to me is in the carnage phase, like he didn't even attempt. I mean, with Green Goblin, there was t moments and times he attempted. But when he saw a carnage, he was like, you know what? No, 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 no. He is not going to reform. He's like, OK, this guy is sick. I'm just going to put him in jail and have a therapist deal with him, which is very different from how a lot of other heroes would deal with some villains, because a lot of other villains, they really try to get them to change even batman tries to change the joker superman i don't think would give up in this situation but spider-man he stays in his lane here which is very very interesting to me and it shows me that he knows his limits he knows what he can and can't do when it comes to other villains and stuff he won't just try to do the impossible i would say he will go out of his way and make a sacrifice of course but he's not going to do something that is really impossible and it's just not going to help anybody for him to try to talk to carnage and try to get him to stop killing he knows that is not in his realm let a therapist deal with it and that's it which like i said not very interesting to me a lot of, a lot of um superheroes would not do that and like i said for most of his villains he does try to attempt to get them to reform but this one, he's like, no, it's impossible, which I would agree with this. This is way out of his league, which I think Batman and a lot of other superheroes should have stuck to let a therapist deal with it because it's not the way to go. They can't change that. I even remember one issue where he was actually really talking to this other villain. And as Peter Parker, of course, he wasn't talking to him about Spider-Man, but he was really trying to help this villain out and he really succeeded in helping this villain reform and change and stuff which to me says a lot because i think i'm gonna stop talking about batman after this because the only reason i'm talking about batman a little bit more in this video is because a lot of people think that he's relatable i'm trying to show you why he's relatable maybe if you're a rich you know billionaire kid but most people i think spider-man is more relatable but anyway Batman could do a lot more, I think, outside of his suit. He has billions of dollars. He can do a lot more for the community. Spider-Man can. And he's doing what he can when he meets these villains to actually try to reform him. And he actually gave this hero a new lease on life in one issue. I definitely recommend it. I definitely recommend it. I'll put the link in the description for the issues and stuff. Maybe put some video annotations on each issue and stuff. But yeah, let's get into the final point. Even with one of his great tur villains, I should say, or a villain that's always been there to try and stop Spider-Man, Dr. Octopus. At the end of 700, he believed that Dr. Octopus can turn it around, which is why he 
does what he does at the end, giving him his memory, showing him everything that's happened to him so that he can be a Spider-Man that can actually try to do the whole truth and justice, blah, 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 you know, stuff like that. And it winds up working. So I believe he's really good at reforming his villains and reforming those type of people, those type of characters. He doesn't go out of his way to reform you know, a crazy psychopath type, but for those that he can understand why they went to this villain aspect or why they went down this evil route, he tries to reform that if it's understandable then. With all this, you see why you want Spider-Man to succeed. Even Peter Parker, you want him to succeed. I won't even say Spider-Man. You really want Peter Parker to succeed. And you should see the everyday struggles from him having to battle villains and then going on beat up making excuses doing all this and that trying to make everybody else happy trying to make have a love life while you have no money i mean spider-man was about to be homeless in one issue and nobody was letting him stay in, at their place and he was really about to be on the street until he got the job opportunity and you root for that moment you don't root for um, him to just beat a villain you don't just root for him to be successful as spider-man you want him to succeed as peter parker so when he gets that job you really are happy for him you're not like hey, whatever we don't really care about this no you really kind of care because you've seen him be homeless and struggle with money for so long and then when he finally achieves that goal you're actually rooting for him it's like a great storybook type of ending or a great comeback story because he didn't really have it all he didn't he wasn't a hero that was praised the spider-man wasn't even praised in the beginning the bugle made him out as a villain as a somebody who just is out to get you they made him yeah as a villain and when he finally succeeds in all this and turns that opinion around because he wasn't well liked he wasn't well received as spider-man or peter parker but when he finally starts getting success as both you feel like that was great to be a part of the journey. Anyway, I'm going to bring this video to a close and see you next time.